guys, it's your boy Alex, and welcome back to the Brave Lionheart channel, and we are back with another reaction video once again here today, and yeah, so, I'm sorry, I can't even talk today, I'm getting tongue-tied and still trying to wake up a bit, but anyway, today is a request by my good friend uh, Yugi, who is now still doing new stuff over on his channel, and you know how that works. Today, we're taking a look at his request on another top 10 list, but by another YouTuber I have not watched. Yeah, I know I've watched a lot of YouTube, basically, but there's a lot of YouTubers I haven't checked out, and honestly, I should check out more of them as, you know, as I can, you know, give, like, you know, basically give them, like, support and stuff. Uh, we're actually taking a look at a top 10 list called... The top 10 Valve fails. Now, for those of you that don't know Valve, like I do, I basically know them as sort of a gaming company, and the only games I've known that they've made are like, you know, uh, Left the Left 4 Dead games, and I think they also had a help in, um, I could be wrong about this, it, no, they didn't do that game, and I know they did like stuff for like Gmod, and you know, for Team Fortress 2, and uh, Portal, and Portal 2. That's the only games that I know them, like, for. But surprisingly, like most gaming companies, they have done things that have basically got them into more trouble than any other certain gaming company out there. So, let's actually take a look at the fails they've done. Well, this is a perfect image for us to start this video off on. Fire and Destruction. Well, more or less, like I said in the last video to the people in uh, Florida dealing with the hurricane at this moment, but yeah, this is not a great way to start this off. So let's actually start this off right. So let's take a look at the top 10 vowel fails. So starting the video in three, two, one, and let's go. I don't know why I always have to do like a thumbs up every time I do that when we start a video, but that's... I'm, I swear that's not going to be my new thing. I'm just trying to, like, do different ways to, like, start off a video. I'm also making sure that the volume is up, so... Yeah, my foot accidentally hit that. I'm just going to try to move it away from that. Okay. This intro is pretty cool, though. Not going to lie. <laughs> very, very catchy music. Feels like maybe heavy metal music. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. All right, here we go. I actually do remember when that was their logo. I can already taste the console divide in the comments, and it is satisfying. Joking aside, a lot of the PC's success in gaming over recent years can be traced back to Valve, but the power of Steam under its belt, gaming culture icons, and inadvertently inspiring others to be more creative, Valve's been very... Oh yeah, the SFM videos. I remember those, like, a lot. Unfortunately, for every amazing feat they pulled off, they've also had a few hiccups where they either come off as apathetic and kind of lazy, or they really didn't think something through all the way. Thankfully, they're nowhere near as scary um, as some of the other companies in world, but that's barely an excuse for when they botch it up. So, what better way to whip Valve into shape? You will give me that hat! You get sloppy. Okay. That is very, very disturbing. It, you know, okay. I haven't played much of Team Fortress 1 or 2. Does that giant eyeball thing happen in the game? I don't know. For anyone who's played Team Fortress 1 and 2, let me know in the comment section down below if that's a thing in the game or if this is just part of, like, the SFM video that they're doing for this top 10 list. Speaking of which, let's actually get this started. Oh, that is so creepy. A battle as old as time itself. Console versus console. An endless struggle to see oh, which yeah, the console stand wars. the test of time. As the like, how many of you out there watching this video right now remember the console wars? Because they were a big deal. See gaming, Valve decided the best way to fight your enemy is to become your enemy. Thus was born the Steam Machine, or Steam Box, as some prefer. The Steam Box? box? Be the bridge between PC and console gaming. Okay, so it's a console that just plays Steam games. Steam. 
including PC and Mac. Okay. Along with that, they also put out their own Steam controller, this is a which does very, very weird controller the that they have. And there was a lag in the video. <laughs> that guy is raging so much. Oh yeah, but gamer rage. It's real. How can this be? It has no functional purpose. It just makes me feel bad. While the console oh, thank you for that, Paradox. Broken, it didn't perform that well either. There were a lot of compatibility issues with certain games, and the library was pretty much a barren wasteland. What definitely didn't help was the price when it first came out. Jeez, so really? Selling from four hundred dollars to six grand. Wow. And as for the controller, so basically, if you guys thought that the PlayStation Five or like new Xbox were like What's very pricey. Look at this thing! Also, it kind of has the same, like, button features as an Xbox controller. Guess they didn't really, like, try to make anything new with it, I guess, at the time. Unfortunately, they couldn't put their best foot forward, and the idea ended up falling flat. The controller was discontinued in late 2019, and the Steam box... Yikes. Well, that is the empty page on the Steam website, and the mystery is solved. I guess we're moving on from that, then and going on to number nine. On the surface, there's nothing really wrong with Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Aside from a few porting differences, the game was oh, wow. faithful to the last I game honestly, I so never played Counter-Strike. I knew it got popular, but I just, like, I never got around to playing it. Valve itself. Here's what I mean. As the title's popularity grew, so did the market for certain skins from the game. Yeah, believe it or not, some people are willing to pay out the nose just for a fancy coat of paint for one of their weapons mm. or characters. Oh, yeah. You'd be amazed how lucrative cosmetics can be. Um... We'll get yeah. to that later. When CSGO okay, the sure. Level, it inadvertently spawned a series of gambling fiascos where instead of actual money, they bet with skins on online casinos. And the collective value wow. of these cosmetics climbed to over a billion. To their credit, you can't really blame Valve for this, but they took their sweet time to fix everything. And it feels like the <laughs> only real reason they cracked down on the game. That was a big was game a lag right there. Oh yeah, it got lawsuit levels of bad. While that one makes Valve look more like a victim of circumstance, they have no excuse for this next incident. CSGO is equipped with a back system that cracks down hard on cheaters. If it detects someone cheating or using a hack, immediate banishment. Why is this a bad thing? The ban hammer is automated. Yeah. There have been reports where those that are innocent ended up so in a like, fire as well. And the it's pretty much like other real places that just like possible. ban Look, people for no like no wrong. reason. I just enforce it blindly and without hesitation. It's a real shame because, as I said, CSGO is a pretty good game. The reason why it's so low is that the whole gambling fiasco isn't really Valve's fault, and technically the VAC is doing its job, but their own laziness allowed all that black market sh to go on for so long. Yeah, CSGO was kind of one of those games I didn't really get into, mostly because I've played, like, a ton of, like, shooter games, like, first-person shooters, you know, like, all... Well, not all the Call of Duties, just some of them. Like, some of them were personally my favorite, while others, they were okay. But, yeah, CSGO was just one I didn't really, like, get into at the time. Many gamers anyway. in this day and age don't just stick to one console manufacturer. They go for multiple, including the PC. Heck, I'm one of them. Because of that, and the potential profits, you think that Valve would capitalize on it, right? Yeah, no. Uh, wow. Ever since Thank you for that. Based on consoles through the orange box back in 2007, Valve has completely Jeez. ignored it. That's 13 years worth of updates that potential fans have missed out on. Because if I'm Wow, that game, is like a lot of updates for just one game. Valve make Team Fortress 2 but at the time, I think like Team Fortress 2 was like the best what? like game well, that people could ask for. And other PC focused developers have branched out into consoles. Valve still refuses to adapt to the times. They claim it's because they Oh yeah, the exploding barrels. Is like a walled garden. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand why people wait to ship out updates. Mm -hmm. You think the efforts that fans have gone through to play it on PS3 would tell them something? Okay, I guess we're done with that one. All right.
Once their own games really started reaching populist status, Valve inadvertently created a virtual economy of buying and selling virtual items. Among these virtual goods are the plentiful, eh? stylish, not really practical TF2 hats. Some of the more rare ones don't Oh unusual no. Hats. What's that? You don't think there's anything lucrative about these goofy hats? Let me explain. What? Oh my gosh, I remember this episode. That drink hat. Not so fast. I'll give you a thousand dollars for such a hat. I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars in cash. In cash? For said hat. Sir, I'll give you a million dollars for that hat. <laughs> and that's how this little tale started. Wow. In the summer of 2019, Valve released a TF2 update that featured about 22 unique, unusual cosmetics. And how did it end? Didn't you hear? They found a whole warehouse full of them. And they're worthless. You know, that wow. Was wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the update man. It also carried a glitch where literally every crate would feature these unusual items. Basically turning Okay, how is that a hat? into fool's gold. Oh, but wait, it gets better. This little bug of theirs ended up throwing TF2's entire economy into a downward spiral. Jeez. Because face it, if I was just going to give you a one-of-a-kind trinket at the drop of a hat, why bother buying from the market? I mean, it's not like people need money to live and... <sighs> I think you might have answered your own question there, bud. This video, Valve has done nothing to try and find a permanent fix to this glitch. Instead, their best solution was to make only one of the unusual cosmetics a player may have picked up tradable, while the rest are on trade lock. Meaning that those Jeez, who that is... the Great Depression can keep That's just sad. Duty, while those who refrained from doing the bad basically lost out on wow. a cosmetics. You know, this could actually be a real life economics lesson. Supply and demand exists for a reason, folks. Okay. All right, moving on to number six. With a lot of these countdown segments, normally what I do is give a little background or tell a joke or two to sort of lead into what I'm going to talk about. They do it for me here. Um, Smithies, are they booing me? Really? After are you saying boo or video boo words? Any game I was all, saying boo This words. is what Valve is finally giving us? From the moment Artifact was announced, fans knew... And yeah, this wouldn't be the last time they try to turn, like, a marketable franchise into a card game. Now, to be fair, Artifact did have some potential. The idea of incorporating a MOBA's lane system into a card game could have made for some interesting strategy. Unfortunately, any potential Artifact had as a game was utterly gutted by its monetization system, which would make some EA huh? blush. So what you will about other games of the genre. Oh, you have you got to be kidding there. me. In Artifact, you can only earn them in-game through paying money on top of buying the game itself. The That's, reason for this is obvious. Valve that can't be, like, the only way that you can get the cards. Get the highest amount then there's, like, no point in playing the game at all if you just have to pay for every single card instead of getting it in the game instantly. To the surprise of absolutely no one sans Valve, this led to the player count quickly plummeting and the game being abandoned. Meanwhile, the value of the cards fell to non-figured in pennies. To add wow. insult to injury, a Dota 2 custom game released shortly afterward, Auto Chess, quickly found itself much more popular and beloved More or less artifacts. battle chess than just send every single Auto character that you have to attack the enemy. Nothing. For and just time, bum rush them, yeah. basically. Until it didn't. You know, I definitely think that in the near future, there definitely will be, like, more companies that try to, like, make a quick cash grab on, like, certain properties and turn them into card games. Some of them will be fun. Some of them won't. I mean, personally, one of my favorites is, like, Animation Throwdown, but I don't do that, like, in-app purchase stuff like most people do on that game. But, yeah, anyway, let's move on with the rest of the list. Oh, wow. Wow. Service is the act of serving the customers. The oh customers no, customer so service. Kind of problem grasping. Don't get me wrong, like customer service is great. Like some of customers some customer, customer service is great. The Better Business Bureau gave Valve an F in customer service. Let's talk about some of the reasons for this score conveniently listed by category. 
Valve is known for oh, I guess they're going like with the seven deadly sins, I guess. Complaints, to the point some people question if Valve even has a customer service division. In fact, the Triple B has reported that of 717 complaints, Valve Jeez, really? 502 of them. That's 70% of complaints wow. ignored. Valve has, on numerous occasions, refused refunds for no other reason than because we said so. Even beyond that, their return policy is pretty brutal. You get 14 days to decide if you want to keep something. That's so, like, right? not well, a lot of refunds, I assume. Of return policy. You can't play more than two hours. Wow! I don't know about you, but it takes me a little more than two hours Ooh, to decide that's if bad. I don't like most games. Well, screw me for wanting to give something a chance, I guess. Valve has been known to backban people who are even remotely suspected of cheating. Oh, we're going back in the whole band bandwagon. In the wrong and ban someone totally innocent. I think I said ban twice and I don't know. <laughs> by Valve. In fact, Jeez. getting a backband reversed is an uphill battle most people just don't have the time or energy to fight. And these are just some of the ways in which Valve customer service is just plain awful. I could list more, but we'd be here all day. And besides, there are still things on this list that need to be addressed, such as... Honestly, this music is getting, like, ca <coughs> I can't even talk, catchier and catchier. Aside from better community support, customization, frame rates, performance, and overall existence, it would be the modding community. When a bunch of dedicated fans get together to add even more content to a game they love, you can end up with a whole Oh yeah, modding is a big over to mm, the original game and big thing in the gaming more community. Hours of their time <laughs> SpongeBob Simpsons hit and run. So That's awesome. Valve teamed up to introduce paid games <clears> fans <throat> hesitant at best and outright hostile at worst. And really, after reading into the details on this deal, who can blame them for that? Oh shoot. Well, Even Data is right scared. That would be the division of funds with a 25-75 split. The 75 <clears throat> Valve and the parent companies take. Many fans already donate money directly to modders, so... But, like, literally, all... Thing, a lot of credit, like, like does go to, like, the modders, because they, like, put in, like, the effort and the hard work to make, like, mods, like, you know, actually work on some games when they mod it, basically. So, with allegations of theft or not receiving proper dues, properly compensating people would turn into a logistical nightmare. And this is assuming everything works. One downside to heavily modding your game is... Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, Mugen. I, I keep forgetting that about that. Their game, they naturally won't refunds. This is why I mentioned earlier <clears> that most modders get donations. In that case, people are giving freely. But when you pay for something, consumers expect more polish and fewer problems. Less than a week after announcing uh, the deal, Valve ended the paid mods initiative. They must have been listening to their customers for once and realized they were setting themselves up for more headaches than profits. However, in hindsight, I think the idea could have worked if Valve had allowed an easier way for modders to receive donations or a better way of getting certain mods showcased. Sort of a challenge to Nexus mods or other modding websites. To bet Bethesda learned absolutely okay. nothing from this, though. But hey, like they always say. Um, 2.5? It is it supposed to be just 2? Or is this the part where it's mostly the honorable mentions in the list? Or maybe it's just trying to be gimmicky or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but... Let's see what 2.5 is. Yeah, this is just, this is very awkward, considering I've never watched this channel before, so... Maybe this is just something he does. <clears throat> um, yeah. Not really, no! When Steam was one of the very few online stores... Or maybe it's just supposed to be like a 2.5 version of something. Among gamers. But yeah, so indie games, games nowadays are like very, very popular. There's a couple out there that are like super popular now. See, it would make sense that the majority of releases for indie games would be on Steam. So, taking advantage of the new growth, Valve decided to create a way for developers to publish their games without needing a corporate backing or some sort of triple A. <coughs> Sorry, watch too much in Sterling. Triple A connection to get started. Um, games can be greenlighted. 
So came Steam Greenlight. At first, it was pretty solid. The titles people submitted were not too shabby, but the impending problem... Yeah, more or less not Octodad, but... Eh, people thought it was popular. ...feedback and voting rather than executive meddling. Good for viewers, but also easily exploitable. So many really, really, really bad games were submitted uh, to the world without review. And yes, these what? include porn games without a rating, unfinished games rampant with glitches, complete asset flips, and in some cases, just the dumbest games possible to see what they can get Some people with. out there can come up with some weird, card abuse. weird and games. ...to make a quick buck by creating their own trading cards for their... It's like a 3D game, PlayStation 1 game. ...every fake sale, screwing up the Steam Store algorithm. In 2017, Steam shut down Greenlight and restarted the system as Steam Direct. This okay. Is the process, but with major overhauls that gave more control to Valve and gave slightly strict nice. guidelines focusing on having actual quality games and making sure the developer was legit. This is a good decision, but doesn't completely get rid of uh, the uh, thousands of games that were greenlighted. And to be fair, there were still plenty oh, of... Oh, Freedom Planet was a good game. To Greenlight, ...such as Broforce, Subnautica, and even Undertale. But oh, yeah, Undertale. Exist, do still outweigh the good. No one will ever forget that Undertale because it's awesome. Outweigh the good ones. TLDR, idea. Make the barrier for entry into game development a little bit easier. Execution. Hmm. Oof. <laughs> Okay, now we're... I'm guessing the 2.5 was supposed to be the 3, hey, okay. Hey, when Valve actually cared about their games? Neither do they! <laughs> okay. Valve might be surprised to know that they were once one of the biggest names in PC gaming, thanks to their hugely influential FPS games. Over the years, though, Valve has become less interested in maintaining their games since it's more profitable to just operate the Steam platform. Once a game gets good enough to self-sustain, they just leave it. TF2 is easily the biggest example when it comes oh, to... Oh, they're really games. harshing on TF2, aren't they? These days, it's teetering on the brink of life support despite still having an active player base. Fans got a brief reprieve thanks to the Jungle Inferno update, but... Even nice! Now, that Valve only pushed out a major update due to competition from Overwatch. That is a game I have not played yet, but I really, really want to play Overwatch. ...compared to Valve's other signature FPS, Half-Life. For years, the closest thing fans had to news was key staff leaving. Yes, Half-Life mm. Alex is coming out, but that doesn't excuse how ridiculous the yeah. next to no updates. There's a reason Half Everyone was waiting for a Half-Life 3, but we never got Dota it. Dota 2 was able to break the mold by getting regular updates. Of course, we all know the answer to why Valve hasn't abandoned that one. Welcome once again to Digital Sports. Oh, um, now we're going into the dishonorable mentions, apparently. Fox normalization. Yes, the crates aren't as bad as some other games, but Valve isn't blameless here. Nerfing Omni Knight into near uselessness. One of my writers insisted on this one. I, I don't really understand it, but apparently it means a lot to him, so I did that. Uh, okay, that was a weird dishonorable mention. I I'm not entirely sure what that one was supposed to be. But now we're moving on to the last one on this top 10 list, and let's see what it is. I'm, I'm starting to understand why Valve basically failed at stuff. I'm starting to understand this video a bit more. So, let's move on to the number one and see what it is that made Valve, like, even worse or anything. Also, I think the TF2 characters are terrified of Heavy's dancing. And as long as it's not the sandwich dancing. I'm sorry, that was my heavy impression. I know it was terrible. When it's done, attitude was bad. Game delays aren't anything new. Heck, in just the last month, we got two major delays with the Final Fantasy VII remake and Cyberpunk. Developers oh, wow. To delay games to yeah. Together, and for the most part, game they delays. <sighs> oh, they're not fun. Latent in their delays that a term is coined for it, you know you failed. Valve time is a term created to describe the original announcements of release windows for Valve's games and when they're actually Wow, for example, really? Half Life was originally supposed to release in November of 1997, and then it was delayed to April of next year, and then the summer. Yeah, that's Life almost like the same thing with like the Duke Nukem Forever release. game or when, when it was Steam announced. The update was supposed to come out a week later, it comes out to 9 months later. It doesn't even have to do with game releases. And just because I'm salty, when Jeez. 
released, the average wait time was usually one to two hours. Now time is literally limbo! Wow! Of course, when people start using the term as a joke, Valve ran with it and used it as okay, an excuse to delay games creepy. from going so far as using it in announcements and creating a page on their official development wiki with every instance this has happened. Yeah, they see it as a compliment, but their attitude is pretty pompous. Wow, man. Look at this quote from one of their business development chiefs. What we're just saying is, we're going to do it when it's ready, and we're going to do it when we think you're going to like it, and we're going to do it when we think it's best. To be fair, not everyone in Valve follows this mantra. The team for Left 4 Dead 2's development tried to avoid it, and the above-mentioned production chief also mentions avoiding developer crunching and listening to customer feedback as reasons for doing it. But consider this. Jeez. The most recent entry on that wiki page is for Half-Life Alex. So they haven't learned any lessons, and considering their fear of threes, they won't be learning them anytime soon. I'm the fiery Joker, and was he trying to do like a nostalgia critic outro? What's going on? Mario. Oh, wow. So I'm guessing that's his next like top ten list. I saw it in, like, the suggested videos thing. <sighs> wow. Kaboom! That's one way to end off a video. Alright, there you have it, guys. That was my reaction to the top 10 Valve fails. Yeah, I could kind of understand why Valve kind of had, like, a falling out with, like, most of the stuff they tried to make. Then again, I think, I'm pretty sure nowadays, like, they've actually, like, you know, cleaned up their act. They've gotten, like, better games coming out and, like, newer stuff. Like, not trying any, like, gimmicky stuff. I don't know, honestly. But I'm pretty sure nowadays, like, they've actually changed some stuff up. Also, uh, wanted to give this shout-out to, uh, Yugi. Thank you for suggesting this video. This definitely got a laugh out of me and, like, definitely made me question Valve a little bit at the time. But... Yeah, thank you so much for this for the request, and I will happily do whatever like uh, other requests that you have for me. I'll try my best to do it, actually. Uh, yeah, sorry, there was like a little burp there for a second. Uh, anyway, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell to never miss a video. And with that, I will see all you awesome guys and gals later. Bye bye.